How's it going everyone? It's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I just thought I'd make a quick video. I, I never really planned this but I've got a cancellation now. I've got about an hour to kill until my next job so something I wanted to sort of address a little bit for a long time uh, and it, it is hard to address this problem in a nice way I suppose is the way to put it but just in a way explaining how YouTube has sort of helped and ruined my business in a way um, because I mean it, I'll tell you the, the good parts at first so I mean YouTube has helped me get myself known out of my local area so obviously I'm a mobile mechanic and I cover like a 12 miles radius um, just generally used to do you know roadside repairs come to people's houses change their brake pads starter motors batteries general stuff like that um, maybe fill an alternator you know um, and I, in between that I done a couple of DPF jobs um, and I started to learn you know about why these issues are going on with DPFs and I saw regularly the same issue that, I, that people were mentioning saying I brought this car to several garages and nobody can figure out what's wrong with it apart from everyone just says Let, let's um, let's delete your DPF that's the main the main uh, answer that they were getting from most mechanics and uh, I noticed that there was obviously a market there for that because people were saying to me you know I don't want to get it deleted because I'd done that on one of my previous cars and then I, I just didn't like you know the stink the smell that was coming from it um, and if you put your foot down you could see black smoke so they, a lot of people just want to get the job fixed properly and it, I noticed that there wasn't any garages in this area that wanted to do that. Um, most garages that came in with a DPF issue they had no idea how to diagnose it or how to fix it or how to prevent the problem come, from coming back and they just wanted to cut people's DPFs out and remap the car. Um, and also there's a lot of customers that just get scared for that reason saying you know I don't want to have to do something like that and then I get caught or I get fined or else my car doesn't pass its MOT so I started learning how to how to work on a DPF and how to get over it now I didn't start off as an expert so nobody does um, I just started repairing them and a couple of my videos got noticed and people said you know like well, I've been trying to sort this problem out for ages and you, you sorted it out one thing leads to another suddenly I'm doing 99% DPF jobs because that's all that are coming in and in, in one way I've been glad for that opportunity because for me to do something like DPFs um, you know sort of specialized in it in an area where you can charge a little bit more for what you're doing whereas before you know if work was quiet you'd have to do, take on these jobs where people say oh, I've got my own service kit can you come and service the car I've been quoted this much by that guy can you beat the price or I've got some brake pads that need doing you know and they want to pay you something like 20 pound to fit them um, doing the DPF stuff has got me away from all of that so I can earn a better living although I've got to spend a lot more on equipment you know I've got five or six diagnostic machines some of them that cost over six grand a piece and then you've got to pay twelve hundred pound a year for the software on them um, so you've got to spend more money upgrading your, your equipment and, and all of that but in return you'll make more money as well uh, and you don't have to take you know the, the shitty end jobs that people want to chuck to you like oh I need some brake pads I've already got my brake pads here or I've got this clutch kit that I need fitting you know the hard work that that's really hard to do roadside um, I remember having to do that work and I'm glad I'm away from that trying to fit clutches gearboxes um, even engine replacements uh, weekly I used to pull engines out of cars on the side of the road with a hoist you know try and lift it into the back of my van nearly breaking my back take it down to uh, an engineer's shop and pull the pistons out put new ones in all of that uh, and it was hard work for the money because you know jobs like that would take you two or three days to get complete whereas I can get a lot more done now and earn a lot more money doing DPFs I've got so good at it that you know a couple hours I'm in and out and I can do maybe two or three days every day every day um, and you probably noticed that in some of my older videos I would regularly go to people's houses where now where I've got noticed from the YouTube is I can park in one spot and just have people you know people are calling me from 200 miles away 500 miles away even different countries Germany 
Ireland, uh, Scotland. I've had someone come from Spain once. Um, and I can just park here and say, look, you can come and meet me here. So you probably noticed that I'm always in the one spot now, which is making me think that maybe I should try and get a garage, but I'm trying to find one local, but I can't find one. I don't want a garage that's 25 miles away. Um, just doesn't make sense for me. If I can get one local to where I'm gonna be living, um, and for that fact, I don't even know where I'm going to be living in the future because, on a whole, England, you know, we've, I've been here cause, because my dad moved here when I was a bit younger, and England has changed, I think, a lot. It's just, it's, um, it's a bit depressing, I think, England. Everyone is, nobody's happy in England, is a nice way to say it, I'd say. But, um, now, where YouTube has sort of affected my business and affected a lot of my regular customers, for me, it's very difficult because I've got a lot of regular customers and, uh, you know, sometimes they call me up, uh, I've got an engine light on, I just need it plugged in and just looking at, and I'm so busy, uh, you know, I'm saying, look, I can't get there. I'm literally fighting as hard as I can to get these jobs that I've got to try and get them finished during the week that I've got and then next week I've got a dozen more of them to try and get through you know and uh, sometimes you've got to say you know you can't make it and I'll, I'll pass them somebody else's number try to get this guy to come out so it affects my local long-term customers a little bit because I'm just too busy to get out to them but the worst part for me is which I don't understand how I've got on such a volume of calls because I know some other mechanics that have got three or four times the amount of subscribers and whatever that I've got, and they're telling me, you know, they're going to get, you know, they get maybe 20 calls a month, nuisance sort of calls where people are just asking them questions and saying, hey, can you give me some advice? I've got this car that I'm working on and it's not starting, or this is an issue, I've got this light on. Do you think, what, what can you tell me what would be wrong with it? It's really impossible for me to answer those questions because I'm not there looking at the car and most of these customers who call say, you know, I've got this problem with a DPF, what do you think could be wrong with it? Well, and if I ask them, you know, normal questions, well, what's the pressure of the DPF? Well, well, I don't know. Various questions, and they can't answer them, and they can't do the tests that I want to do. Can you plug a manometer on it? Can you do this? No, I haven't got a manometer, I haven't got this. So, like, they're just, they're asking me questions that I can't answer, and they physically can't answer or test themselves. But then you also get garages, mechanics calling me up. And how that's affected me is getting 100 plus calls a day, sometimes even 200 calls a day, of people just wanting to ask you questions and have a chat. And I've, at first I thought, you know, this is great. I gave a few people advice. They've called me back and said, you know, what you've told me has helped out. Uh, it's actually helped me to fix the car. and. Uh, thank you for that and I thought yeah this is that's really good I've, I've helped a lot of people out but after a while it just gets really really tiring because you're dealing with this like a hundred plus times a day and um, so what I've had to do is I've had to disable my phone calls so I don't my phone just doesn't take incoming calls anymore and that affects me trying to run my business because if someone is coming to meet me at my location where I am and they're trying to call me because they're you know they're they're at they're nearby but they're just a little bit lost and they're trying to call me you know where are you I'm trying to find you and my phone just doesn't take incoming calls and then it, it it's a, it gets a little bit annoying in that way because I can't turn if I turn the calls on the phone will just ring non-stop and if you answer the phone these people like just want to stay on the phone for half an hour having a talk guiding them through whatever they want to be guided through and then once that phone call's finished, it doesn't end there. They want to call back four or five more times during that week for further consultations on the phone. And I'm not getting paid for it. I'm busy, I'm trying to work. I'm trying to make videos for people to, to help them. I can't deal single-handedly, even if I wasn't working, if I was just sitting at home now and I retired, I couldn't single-handedly deal with the amount of phone calls that people call looking for help. Like I said, I know guy, guys that have got four or five times as, as much subscribers that I have, but they don't get so many of these calls that I'm getting. And I think the whole reason for that is because I've, I've found this niche area that nobody really understands. 
I think now my videos have been out, a lot of people are starting to understand how DPFs work, but a lot of people don't. I mean, I get people calling me saying, I'm calling you about the video you done on a Range Rover where you fixed the DPF. I've got exactly the same problem. And I was just wondering if you could guide me through it uh, over the phone. And you're like, I, say, I can't really do that. But uh, you found a video? Why not just, you know, if you can't follow the video, I've made an instructional video showing you step by step and you can't follow the video, but you want me to guide you over the phone when I'm blind with my eyes closed. It's it's really hard. Um, so I think the worst part of, of what's happened to me is I just feel so drained out because of the amount of, and now that I've disabled the calls, I'm getting like 200 emails a day. And people would even WhatsApp you, text message, try to call you on WhatsApp, try to call you on on Facebook. Um, and when you're getting 200, what some people don't understand is they're like, oh, I've got this, got this problem, the same problem. I wonder, let's try calling this guy. But what they don't understand is 200 other people have, are thinking exactly the same thing. Let's just call this guy. And there we go. I've got... I'll blank off half of the number. So I've got calls from WhatsApp calls from Turkey, Afghanistan, Miami, Germany, all of these places people just WhatsApp, you know, call you and I'm trying to block off half of the number so I'm not showing the guy's information but um it just gets really annoying, you know, even though I've got the calls switched off, people will try and still find other ways to call you, try and call you on Facebook, WhatsApp, email you, um, and I'm trying to go through my normal emails where, I'm, where I've got jobs booked in, and you're trying to filter through all of the ones that are just asking questions, and you think, oh, well, it, it only takes a minute just to, add, to reply to a couple of these guys, but you've got 200 of these emails to reply to, just people asking questions. And it doesn't end there because when you reply to those emails, I've replied to some emails and you know I've looked back and it's like this is a week later. I've been replying to this guy every day, and it's like ten days later, and this conversation is just going on, on and on and on, and I can't physically do that with every every person. I mean I can make the videos and put it up, and you get hundreds of thousands of people watch it. If you imagine like that, some of the videos have got like. 500,000 views, some of the videos on TikTok have got 2 million views. Um, 2 million people watching a video. One single video that I made is a lot easier than me trying to physically speak to these 2 million people, if you can understand. Um, so yeah, that's just how it's affected my business. Um, you know, 2 a.m. people will try and call, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., and all of these emails are coming. People would email me at 3 a.m. I'm checking my emails next morning. Someone's emailed me at 3 a.m. asking a question, and 10 minutes later, half an hour later, they're sending another email saying, did you get my email? I'm just waiting for a reply. And like, and you've, you've received six emails from the same person overnight asking, please, can you help, please, can you help? Um, I know it sounds easy to reply and help these people, but it's not. You know, someone tells me, after all of these emails and questions you get from someone, you say, well, what's the problem? Well, I've got an engine light on. And what makes you think that's related to the DPF? Well, I don't know, I was just assuming it, it might be the DPF. Well, you haven't even di put it, run a diagnostic scan on it, so, you know, how can we even, how can I even advise you what the problem is? When we don't even know what the problem is, it's, and then how that also affects is, you know, you get angry people messaging saying, you know, I've rep I've messaged, emailed you s several times and text you and I haven't had a response. I'm really not happy with how you're treating me and like, I can't deal with it. It's just impossible. Um, so we got that issue and then you got, I've got people that go on Google and leave me a review. I've got a couple of guys on there now saying, you know, I've emailed this guy and he didn't respond. I'm not happy. Uh, just general stuff like that. So I'm just hoping that if, if by sharing this information that some people would sort of think, you know, well, maybe this guy's got enough to deal with. But the problem is, is I don't think any of my subscribers are doing these calls. It's always people that have just 
browsed through YouTube and found my video and then thought, you know, out of out of nowhere, let's just give this guy a call. So anyway, not just for myself, like I said, if, if you're looking at a lot of YouTubers, I see a lot of guys on air and the reason they don't get calls is some guys are working in garages and they're not really they're not really making it public what garage they're working in, they're just putting videos in. So you can't contact them and even if you were to contact them, you'd be contacting the garage that they work at or something like that. My problem is, is because I'm self-employed, people are finding my business and just trying to contact me directly. And like I said, the same thing over and over. I can't, I can't physically take 200 calls and help 200 people every day for free. Uh, and even if I was getting paid for it, a lot of people said to me, look, I'll pay you. I'll pay you for the phone call or I'll pay you for the advice and a lot of people mentioned in comments before why don't you charge people for telephone advice or telephone consultations I, I, I still could physically couldn't do it I don't have the time even if I was retired I could you know take a few phone calls a day but I couldn't take phone calls one person couldn't take the phone calls in that volume and each of these calls would take you know up to a half an hour to over an hour on the phone because you'd have to ask them to go through certain stuff, check all of the live data, and that's considering that they have all the right tools to do so. So that's my little rant over with. Um, that's just how YouTube has helped and affected my business. So it's affected a lot of my local customers. They can't contact me, um, and some of them are not happy with that, and especially the older customers who who call you and they can't get through, so they can't even email. Uh, they don't. A lot of people don't use email to older customers and old-fashioned guys, you know. So that's it. Um, leave it at that, and uh, see you on the next video.